Mm. Welcoming Shell Carol. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel so honored for being here. Yeah, thank you for arriving in this space and in and receiving the invitation. Um, I'd love to introduce you in the way that we dropped in before this, in that you're an intuitive energy guide. And I would love to hear from your viewpoint what that is. Like what is it that what is the guide? Amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you for asking that question. Well, I, I just feel like in terms of my, my, my own emotions, and, I, uh, and this is why, like, I love, I love, you know, sharing online, right? It's like, it's just, and, and, and because I'm so open, it's like, it's the ability just to be able to share all of me and all different parts of me and all different in parts, emotions, right? Because people really need to get to understand that, like, all emotions are welcome. As soon as people have certain types of emotions, then suddenly there's, you know, I feel that people tend to be are like, oh, no, I can't be around that. Yeah, but if you can be comfortable with that, then, you know, you can get to help a person guide through, guide their emotions instead of just, you know, sitting with that. You know what I mean? You can, like, uh, and so this is why I do do a lot of show up my, in my own full expressions and all the different ways that I do, because, you know, allowing people to really see the, see that they that being whatever comes up in whatever moment is absolutely acceptable because you we need to be able to look at that. And if we're not allowing each other to look at the things that come up in the moments that they come up in, when you know we, we we're limiting our growth in in that. Uh, and that's why I feel I do I do really love what I do in that showing up and expressing myself in every just every which way, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I believe that um, through the vulnerability, I would say, you know, bringing all authentic parts of self. So we are everything. We have elements of shame and guilt and pain and happiness and joy and excitement. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and being able to be seen and to also be able to show yourself in all of those different elements of yourself. It also gives people permission to be able to be that themselves. It gives exactly. It, yeah, there's one piece exactly, yeah. that I have seen when I drop into some level of vulnerability and I really open my heart and I really drop any walls and barriers and I express from that place of truth that there's there's two things that you that happen and I feel there's two two options in every single situation uh, similar to what we were talking about earlier is that you've got a choice of connection or a choice of separation and I feel like when I drop into vulnerability and I can be all of those different expressions no matter how dark or perceived negative they are at different times it gives the opportunity for someone to actually drop their walls and their barriers around their heart and meet me in connection. Now, the wow. only, yeah, the only way that I've found this is it's not seeking connection. It's not asking things to get somebody to open. It's not facilitating. It's okay. If I want to feel a level of connection, I'm going to be that first and invite someone into the space. Um, and it's been magical for me understanding that if I really want to receive something, I also have to be able to be it in all of me. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And that's also, um, I guess that's a level of learning to trust ourselves in all of our expressions. And um, Absolutely. <laughs> And you um, were telling me that a bit of your journey before we jumped on this podcast has been learning to sit with yourself this year. Um, yeah. This oh, that's been very challenging, I can tell you. <laughs> you know, uh, it's been very challenging because actually, you know, like growing up, like you know, a very active mind, active kid would have been considered to have ADHD, you know, whatever, you know, and never mind. To me, so I've got the old alphabet, never mind the ADHD, you know. <laughs> 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 you 
you know, but like the thing is with that, it's always busy. And then getting into a caring role as I have done overseas as a carer, you know, supporting the disabled children, the adults, the disabilities to the elderly, um, like it's very, it's 12 hours a day. It's like all day, every day, you know, like you get, it's very long hours. And then to come into a relationship that had set me up to literally doing nothing for a year. I'm like, ah! <laughs> you know, like, and, and then having to learn through the experiences, having to be like, I right, literally just sit and, and literally just sit. And it's amazing that I can get to a point. I never, like, I couldn't sit, like, I see it in my son, which is amazing now, right? This is the beautiful thing about mirrors. And I'm absolutely looking at my son on a regular basis to see where, what patterns I have potentially passed on. You know, there's I have, there's, there's, I have. there's no two ways about it. So, like, seeing where he can't sit still and realizing how I was when I was at his age and not being able to do that. And this is the beautiful thing, is that in that, now that I know that, I've been able to get to teach him that, mm. you know, that it's, it's a game changer for him. If you can learn to be still now, mm. you know, it's, it's, just a, it's just a skill. Uh, it's just a skill that i got to teach him, you know? Yeah. And if he can get that now, it's going to change his life, really. He's not going to battle as much as I did. I mean, and... The question I have for you, I guess, is around, I have worked with a lot of people with um, claimed to be on the spectrum with ADHD or autism or right. um, attention deficit disorder. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? Is that what it is, ADD? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I I look at it very differently. I see someone who has... Right this label as being someone who's very sensory and very energetic. They have a lot of energy moving through their field. So they're very yeah. intuitive and they pick up on energies and emotions and sounds. And um, it's the focus point is, yes, it's very hard to find who I am and my center in amongst all of this. So I know many are like, and, and, and the boredom piece, right? So it's like there's, there's yeah, a- Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> a story around boredom that comes up. So when you first started to sit with yourself, how did you, how did you find doing that? Like what came up for you? What emotions arose? Like how did you manage to, um, how did you, how did you sit with yourself? Because as, as, um, as guides and as people that speak into these pieces, I know I often forget, you know, who was I back then? Like, and how do I explain? Yeah someone what sitting with themselves is because that was something my mentor told me in the middle of my um, health crisis and this very deep dark night of the soul she's like just go and sit with it and I'm like I don't know what sitting with it is <laughs> yeah what is sitting with it and you know oh. too ashamed to even say can you give me a pragmatic you know step-by-step -step yeah. explanation yeah. of what that is um but what do you feel like that process was for you well literally well you know it's, it's literally sitting with the emotion like not doing anything with it it's not acting in on it it's not talking into it it's not speaking about it it's literally literally feeding it literally like not doing anything with it and that's you know it's not people have the concept well sit with it well like i'm a sit it's where do i sit what i sit on you know <laughs> no it's it's not it's the concept of feeling the emotion that's it and not doing anything with it and um i can tell you like there there were times when i was doing that like literally feeling almost feeling like my skin is crawling like oh I need to go, so I need it, you know, but it's, and, and well, what I also found though is there is a point though that, you know, we can sit with an emotion to such a degree that we actually haven't, we haven't shifted it. It's still there. And, you know, we, we forget that. So, you know, that's why I do believe in, in people must be allowed to scream. <laughs> people must be allowed to scream anywhere, everywhere. I'm going to change the world on that. I can tell you that because how else are we supposed to get rid of this crap? 
And you know, when people, are, I mean, I got a fine for a thousand, a thousand rand in my complex. Other things as well, my kids. But part of that was because I apparently am shouting. Okay, well, listen, I'm just expressing myself. I'm sorry if it's too much. <laughs> uh, you know, but um, yeah, it's it's what I felt that is after that time, if you sat with it too, like almost too long, and you, you then you need to do. You need to expel that. And what I what I found was I, I just I went into the forest and and I did a live around around this and I just I screamed. I'm like, Dah! and in that process, which is a really beautiful thing, because in that process, when you reach the pivotal point of why it is you're so frustrated, you you crack and it's a different feeling altogether. Then it's it's something else. And when I hit that point, it was like. I was like in tears, boom, you know, it's like something else, you know, and it's, that's the point. And that's the point to uncovering what's really underneath that. Like, and that's why I do believe in really good screams, really give you the opportunity to hit a point where what's, what's really sitting underneath that is not anger or frustration. It's actually a lot of hurt. Mm, yeah, exactly. A lot of hurt. And that's, um, it's really beautiful how you express that. So I um, used to work primarily with men. And so getting men to feel emotion was quite an interesting uh, exploration um, due to our conditioning and the way society has programmed men specifically. Um, but we're all shut down as a human species. Feeling is yeah. not something that's really um, seen as acceptable or how to even sit in healthy feeling or be in emotion not i wouldn't say there's unhealthy feeling yeah. in consciously choosing to be in your feeling yeah exactly and it's, it's the demonstration of right yeah it's the demonstration of your emotions that 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 depicts whether it's conscious or unconscious whether it's over whether you're being overran by your emotions or whether you're choosing to yeah yeah exactly sit. exactly so sitting yeah. with Sitting with the emotion is um, what I would say one of the one of the great steps, especially for when you're starting to feel like what is emotion. Like many many of the men that I work with will don't know where what rage feels like, or like like the sensation yeah, in the yeah. body, or um, they might not know where it's held oh. in. The body. So sitting with it and just being with it allows you to just have an awareness of what's taking place in my field like what yeah, does yeah. it feel like okay yeah. tightness in the chest and my hands get all like clammy and tight and um i might get a lot of head pressure um and just sort of having an awareness of it and as you were saying learning to sit with it is beautiful learning to sit with your emotion learning to yes if i woke if i wake up today and i feel depressed it's okay i'm not judging depression i'm not saying that exactly. i'm I'm not, I'm just in a low vibrational state where I'm not feeling as ecstatic about life. But that's the first, yeah. step, right? That's the, that's a witnessing yeah. of this is how I'm displaying myself at this point in time. This is what's here alive inside of me. And when you can start to do that, it's okay, how do I, release it or how do I transmute it or how do I express it and and screaming is a great one right screaming is a great yeah. <laughs> a great permission it really is. <laughs> especially you know, and, if you've had a really suppression is. of emotion if you've been suppressed but, in a yeah no mm. absolutely but it works out the way as well because listen when you're excited why are we not like getting really excited like yeah man you know what I mean like I love and that's the thing about me, like whatever emotions that tend to come, I just, um, um, I don't know, all or nothing kind of guy. I want to like, yeah, all of it. You know what I mean? So uh, like when I get excited, I want to be able to express that, you know, like really. Yeah. So there and is, there is a, there is screaming on both kind of levels, but both different positive in polarities, right? It's, there's screaming for when you're really angry and there's screaming for when really happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and it, I feel as though that is a necessary part of giving yourself permission to have a voice, giving yourself permission yeah, yeah. to feel, self permission to experience life in a way that has been in the past perceived as wrong, not okay, and um, 
maybe even um, being projected on you for being too much or um, over sensitive yeah. or um, whatever reflection you've received externally where you've started <laughs> shutting <laughs> off. Apparently, um, apparently I'm too old to have such an emotions. <laughs> oh, God bless them. Uh, um, but one, anyway. of the, one of the beautiful things I feel like you you know when you were saying about going out in the forest and expressing the other way of releasing is i call it leaning in so it's like sitting with something but then leaning in and so yeah. leaning into whatever that emotion is which for you was frustration in this example and however we decide to use it the more that we get identified with frustration and what that feels like then it's like okay all right, well, I just want to, I want to know what's underneath frustration because now I've done this enough, I know that there's actually a lot of other stuff underneath all of this feeling. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah, not exactly. I'm not frustrated. I'm not annoyed. I'm actually really, really hurt and really upset and then allow the grief. And yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Um, and I feel like the, the cycle of that becomes, at least for me, I've found the more that I've... Uh, you know, ugh, gone into allowing myself to be in it, it doesn't come out so expressive anymore. Like it's not that it's right better way or anything. It's just more right. that I've been able to get to a point of, hmm, okay, I have frustration in my body. And what I do is I envision, it's gotten a lot faster than this, but this is sort of how it started, was I started to envision the frustration yeah. and just going, I can give it up. Like, just like hand it up, hand it away. And amazing. I would love to hear you like give this a try and tell me what came up for you next time. Oh, feeling I the yeah, feeling it leave my body, just all this frustration energy, and then yes. it drops into what's underneath that. And, you know, that might have been, um, might have been betrayal. And then, this I is, yeah. Under betrayals, the sadness. This is kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is kind of the reason why, though, I'm kind of dropped into doing to doing the water fast, right? Because mm. I want to explore a lot of things that I'm not aware of, and I know that dropping into doing the water fast, it, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come up in the next few days. It's not too worried about that, but it's it's important because, like. Like my body's almost my whole body's been calling us. Like my mind and my body, my see, take it, take it, take it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And I understand why, because like it's it's the call to myself and it's looking at those energies that I carry that that surface unconsciously, you know. And um, so yeah, that's just the whole big reason as to why I've dropped into doing that is to explore those emotions that I'm unaware of that that, just, that come out and are displayed unconsciously. Mm, yeah, and I think it's important to do. I think I think people should do it. You know, uh, I'm. I feel like <laughs> telling anyone well, they do anything is probably. Well, not they should do it. No, not not that they should do it, but but you know, if they call to, let's call it that way. If they feel called to, they should they should do it. If they feel called to. The beautiful thing about fasting is it weakens the egoic mind. So if we just put that as it the egoic mind weakens and the vibration starts to shift right there's less suppression from food basically there's less density and heaviness yeah. so your vibration lightens and your ego becomes more triggered <laughs> and less and and less controlling so you find you are yeah things that don't normally pop up pop up because you're heightened you're body is yeah. more connected um, energetically to source. There's more of a feeling of connection, even when you exactly go into, yeah, even when you go into exactly the that. Exactly that. process. And so people use it for, I mean, um, you know, uh, what do they call it? Vision quests, you know, going out and you fast out. In the <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. You said vision quests. It's, it's, uh, that's so aligned right now because it's exactly that because what I, what I want to do for the rest of my day is literally write out my vision. 
that have that's here, right? And that's here, and write it down, and 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 like uh, for each area of my life, and then in there, I'm gonna be really specific, specific as well, because I'm like, all right, Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna read your book. I'm gonna do all the things. I'm gonna do all the things, and I'm just gonna uh, and I'm gonna watch it. And I know I really got a feeling in my in the depth of my soul that everything I write. I'm going to see come out precisely as it is, as I've written it. Uh, I really believe that. And, and this is the intention also back and behind, behind this, because I see the vision that I, that I, I, I see who I am in the future, who I am, who is essentially now, you know, we're not separate from that. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, so now, okay, what are the steps? You know, so it's just that. And it's just trusting that, in the, trusting the process of that to reach that. And so this is why the intention of the fast is to literally take the time to put the vision on paper and then and then something you know what I'll probably what I'm definitely gonna do, not probably, I'm definitely gonna do every day then is just take a glance, read it. Read it, you know, just a couple of pages that it's just gonna be like I said, probably five pages for each thing. But if I read that every day, then it's I'm breathing and starting to really kind of start feeling into that uh and i really want to test Joe, dr joe's dispensers to, to, you know things because listen i want to be in a situation to literally change my environment and i know i can <laughs> i know i can well i i feel like you um highlight a really beautiful tool for people um around becoming or envisioning something right it's like sitting down yeah writing a vision or a feeling or an experience when you want to say you're not happy with your life or there's something that is in discord with what you know is true it's sitting down yeah and taking the time to not only think about what would that look like or what would that um, feel like but what would it sound like what would I be actually doing if this was manifesting doing exactly experience like how would the beingness of this vision is with as much detail as you can so you can feel it like you're there because your mind doesn't know the difference between truth and ah absolutely absolutely like this reality and perceived uh, imagination absolutely reality. yeah and no, absolutely and this powerful. is this is why like oh. i just keep ah oh, i i just keep seeing myself on the stage speaking zulu about speaking in Zulu about consciousness, right? And like, if you think of the state of this country and the Africa in general, right? I mean, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I just like, it just, I can't, I just, I, there's no words that can describe that. There's no words that can describe how I feel in that. Um, and so, I mean, I've already got an, a, a friend who's, who's throwing me some, you know, a lot of bit of Zulu things and I'm, I like I know back bit a bit a bit myself, but not enough to have a full conversation. And that's the point I want to get to because you know it's a message. Uh, there's a message on my heart, and I know that also in the uh, in the the intense desire to learn the language, it's going to cross a lot of barriers. You know, there's there's a lot of white people in South Africa that don't know the language, and it's because they haven't been brought up in it. Were like the Africans have with English, which is, it doesn't make sense to me. So it's a really good way to pr bring people together. Uh, and that's why it drives me. <laughs> well, I'm, I want to witness you in that vision. Um, just for a moment, I want to really acknowledge you because uh, it takes courage to express something big like that. And I know this yeah, own knowing from my own moments and um it would it was about six years ago when i first received a vision similar to yours um different right. <laughs> but i was listening <laughs> and at the time i was not conscious awake or spiritual in a form of having done any work um at that point i was very much in my entrepreneurial um, stage of being where it's like, I create my reality and I can push and make something happen. Um, but not aware of triggers, emotions or anything. It was more of the real masculine do. If I do this, you know, the motivational speeches. 
that are like yeah, discipline, yeah. Da, 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 yeah, 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 very, yeah. very masculine driven. <laughs> it was um, listening to an inspirational keynote speaker and I had this feeling and this vision that one day I'm going to be on stage talking to like hundreds of people, maybe thousands. <laughs> And I just got goosebumps all over my body. And I didn't, at that yeah. time, I didn't know really what that meant. I like, it, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of a full goosebump body confirmation then. I was like, whoa, I'm going yeah. to yeah. do that one day. <laughs> and I, yeah, I thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, and it was everything in my body. And I mean, that vision has yeah. more and more clear and more and more awareness and understanding of what that is. And I know yeah. that's a part yeah. of Path. My path will be that I will be um, speaking at conferences. I will be speaking on speaking in um, ways to help humanity shift. And I know that. And there's not one part of my body that tells me I've made that up or that's a story or that's a vision. That's what I know. And so I know yeah, yeah. that to me, that whatever steps and however long it takes, that that will manifest in your reality. And I know that because I no, can. hundred percent. I can feel that. So I just wanted no, to. hundred percent. Hundred percent. And you. I wanted to speak into it because people listening to this, you know, we can deny our own truth based on how will other people receive me? How you know I must be absolutely. I, I'm not that good, or who am I to do that? Or you know, all the stories, <laughs> all the narratives that come up. And I feel like it's just a beautiful permission piece to say, if you envision something in your life, if you feel something in your heart and your soul, trust that. It might not happen today, tomorrow. Let's go next. for it. Like, yeah, but don't trust, hold back. trust what you feel. And and look, I mean, in hindsight. Yeah, absolutely. Trust. Absolutely. Yeah, trust. <laughs> The theme that we were going to jump on is talking about is trust, is trusting that, is even, yeah, if, yeah. even if you and no, I absolutely. have declared this in this podcast and it ne never happens for either of us, yeah. right? Hypothetically, if that never happens, right. how much growth yeah. and how much internally will have shifted for both of us because we trusted in something that we were oh, talking about. Dude. Plenty, 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 plenty. It's, 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 it's an amount that's probably unmeasurable because the reason why I say that is because, it, you know, if, you, if we understand that if you want to be something and if you see yourself in the future as something that you actually, when you understand that you actually get to be that person now and how, you know, to day to day, then you're going to change. Doesn't matter. You, go, you know, you're going to, you're going to get there or you're going to come close to it or, you know, and, and, and even if you don't, you've, you've become the person that you, you were striving to be, to, to be able to do the thing is the thing that you wanted to do. And that's, that, that's a beautiful path to follow any, for anybody to follow. And that's why I think it's also important for people to really listen to what's on their heart. Mm. Do that. Mm. Stop, you know, if you've got to, if you've got to do, people are so stuck in mundane jobs and they're so afraid to jump into doing what they what's on their heart. They think about something that lights them up, but they're too afraid to do that because they're stuck into a mundane job because they've been sold the story that your dreams will not make you money. And so, what what is that? You know, this is the problem with society, the society that we live in, and that. You know, the very education that was system that we were sold, sold that's supposed to educate us is actually uneducating us in the fact that what, you know, we have dreams and we're not supposed to follow them. What education system is that? That doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, and, and just tapping back, back in terms of trusting, right, in terms of what the vision that you see in yourself. Nelson Mandela had a vision. He only got to his vision when he was 79. But are we going to stop? Where well, you're going to stop your vision because you're you're going to be you think you're going to be too old to when you get there? Ah, ah, ah come on, <laughs> no way. Mm -hmm. Stick with the vision. It doesn't matter the age you get there, but you generally you generally most people. And this is the thing I read in the 
I'm reading that breaking the habit of, be, read, of be, being yourself, uh, Dr. Joe, but like, you know, I read that every single great leader or great person that were iconic that we've seen, they, they had a vision about something, you know, you know, like Mahatma Gandhi, it was like, you know, all of the people, you know, they had a vision and they just kept at that vision. And it doesn't matter what the steps, they just kept doing the steps to, to get there, like forgetting about not even, you know, they trusted that no matter what went on around them, that they were still going to get to where they were going. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a deep trust. Like, it's a deep trust. It's something, like, even, you know, you have so much situations. People are thrown in so much situations. But the problem is, they keep looking at the situation. Well, you keep looking at the situation. <laughs> Forget the situation. Just focus on where you're going. And, and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> well, I, I mean, for me, my personal story, I really, I deeply, deeply resonate with this. Um the level of trust that has come up and um, been the guide to every step within my life so um, well, mm -hmm. so far, but since I chose it, <laughs> since I chose to actually <laughs> see, um, to be it, and since I remembered my connection with Creator, really, since I uh, awakened yeah, to, to something greater. So I felt that. But in, in yeah. the process of trust, it has been, I actually like Christianity. There's, there's a, I'm, I'm not Christian and I don't, I'm not religious, no, of course. but there's this no. uh, beautiful peace in Christianity that I hear often around having so much trust and faith in God, however you want yeah. to see it, oneness of creator, a source as infinite what we are -ness. <laughs> um, yeah. that when you have so much trust in just life force energy, there, that's beautiful, life force, that that yeah, life exactly, yeah. will continue to cycle. It's actually a universal truth. Like life never stops. Absolutely. So life. So if we have Absolutely. trust that if I'm still continuing to choose to feel and, and and flow with this, that even if I don't know how it's gonna come, even if I don't know how it's gonna manifest or what steps to take, you know, in 10 days from now, if yeah, I can yeah. trust in each moment, I will feel and I will know the next step. And it's like just trusting exactly, exactly where we are at each moment and learning to be guided by that life energy, by that life force. It, it directs you and sitting absolutely um, allows that to come through stronger. The more that we sit with ourselves, the more that that message or that knowing or that intuitive guidance or that higher self is able to be heard because there's less distractions in the way. There's less heaviness. Exactly that. Exactly, exactly that. It's exactly that. I know um, on the flip side, for someone who has done a lot of trust and surrender, <laughs> um, <laughs> to the point that... Um, I, I mean, from a human standpoint, from most people that unless they've got some level of consciousness like yourself would think that I'm absolutely and utterly insane, like crazy, <laughs> <laughs> that I have given up every possible paradigm. There's not one paradigm from human conditioning that I've held on to. So I've given up uh, oh. in trust of the divine or God, yeah. um, you know, relationships, business ideas, how to make money, attachments to money, attachments to friendships. I've, um, you know, the, the, I will, I'll, call, I'll use the word sacrifice, even though I don't see it as sacrificial in this negative context, yeah. but I, yeah. I'm a mother of four and I have, um, stepped away from my role as mother and that's been a piece of trust and every time i sit yeah. in identity every time i allow my ego it's like there's a pain story that comes up there's a this isn't yeah. fair 
Like, why am I doing this? Is this the right thing to do? And, you know, there's a narrative. There's a lot of, there's been a lot of hurt and a lot of growth. But the one thing throughout this whole experience, the parenting one's a really good one because that's hard for a lot of people. Yeah, like, it is. like for most mothers, they go, whoa, you don't have your kids. And that must be really hard is what I get straight away. They're like, yeah, hold yeah. their heart. And they're like, that must be really hard. Now, it's been a three year process. And every time I've sat here in this moment of like, I can't do this anymore. God, like, I can't, I can't, like, if this is the right path for me, like truly, if this is the right path, just show me what I need to do. And the answer every yeah. time, trust, trust, just. <laughs> trust. And, and because my brain goes, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do this. Maybe if I did this or I could do this and, you know, I'm trying to fix it from my mind. And it yeah. just, so I sit here, of course. it's trust. And my body drops <laughs> and it's like, I feel something different. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I do trust this. I actually do. And yeah. uh, without going into details, there's been some magical things that have happened where I Not felt bad. <laughs> so, so helpless from my mind's perspective. And then Back full then. circle, things just drop in. Things change, magically change with me doing nothing, yeah. nothing, literally me doing nothing yeah, other yeah, than yeah, yeah. trust, yeah, yeah. <sighs> trust. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll give you a story, right? i give you a story about me trusting as, and I suppose at the time I was very religious, a quiet Christian. Uh, mm. I'm not so much anymore. I've, got a, I've adopted a lot of other things. Um, I mean, I still have a basis of that, um, which is, you know, it's, it's, it kind of, it's, it's difficult because like, you know, something I'm born into, it's not something I chose, you know? So it's kind of like, ah, oh, it's still there, but still exploring and all that. But in any case, it has given me a very good foundation, right? Um, so I, I, uh, at 20 years of age, I didn't have, I didn't know anybody, didn't have a place to stay besides uh, the hostel I, w I was booked in for two weeks. And I went over to Ireland. <laughs> and then I got to Ireland and I was like, okay, cool. Well, I don't have a job yet, but I've got this money. I'll just go put uh, rent down and, 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 and months, you know, months rent and uh, uh, the first month deposits and all that. And then I was like, okay. I need to find a job. I'm like, okay, I've been putting, putting my CVs everywhere, right? So it wasn't even, and I remember back being, wasn't even afraid, nothing. Just, I just remember just being, okay, well, you see, because at the back of my mind, I kind of had a safety net because I knew that you know, I had a return ticket if anything didn't work out, right? Because, so I was like, okay, well, then I just went. And I, and I kind of think like, you know, that's kind of what we should be thinking in the, in, in the back of our life, in our mind. You always have, you're always going to have a safety net. God's always going to have places. But in any case, I went into um, a club on my own and I was like, oh, no, I, I need to get out, just have a jam. And I met a guy, right, a nice guy. We, we, he, started, he picked up our South African. He was very much into rugby. And we headed off like, uh, you know, we, we headed off like two two pickles in a jar. So uh, we were uh, chatting about rugby and then soon, uh, soon, anyway, the night finishes off and he says, why don't you come down during the week and get a bagel? So I was like, okay, cool, no worries. I come down, got a bagel. The very next week, I'm, I'm, I get a phone call um, from, the, from the cafe where he works. His manager calls me, I believe you're looking for a job. I'm like, oh yeah, amazing. I just had a conversation with the guy in a club and I ended up getting a job. Uh, trusting? Yes, I am. <laughs> you know, and that's the kind of stories that I can tell. There's just quite a few. <laughs> it's just amazing. And the more that we live in alignment with that, right, with that element of trust, of I'm, if you can come to a place where you really know this, of I'm always safe, I'm always protected, yeah. everything is always happening for a reason. I, yes. um, you know, I'm always provided for, right? We have this, well, especially at the moment, collectively, there is a massive scarcity story. Like every yeah, yeah. I know is in this story about financial scarcity. And 
if if the mind can just flip of I'm always provided for. I really don't have yeah. to have stress and anxiety around paying this bill. I don't really have to have stress and anxiety around where this money is coming from or how it's going to provide itself. Because if I even look back, right, even if we look back and we yeah. have to find the proof in the in the past, the proof is, yeah, yeah pretty much always been provided for, even if I didn't realise at that time <laughs> that I was provided yeah, for. absolutely. I was. But like, and, and absolutely, but it's the question, like it's the thing is, you know, it's the question of, of are my needs met right now? Are, are my physical needs met right now? Am I safe? I all got through it. Are, are you safe? Are you protected? Are you, uh, 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 are you fed? Are you just, are you clothed? Blah, blah, blah. All the physical. Yeah, all right. So outside of that, it's a want. It's only a want. Outside of that, like, and it's not a wrong thing to have a want, but mm -hmm. if it's, if you're, if your needs are met, then, you know, it's just be patient that that, whatever that desire is, it'll come. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like, and, and the thing is, it, let's, let, let's, let's, I mean, let's call it spade a spade. Look, everything is, you've been looked after, like right now, you've been looked after, you're sitting in front of me, from, from birth to now, you've been looked after. <laughs> You've been looked after. You're fine. Look, you're beautiful. We're sitting there. You know, you've been looked after. Look, I mean, this is the thing. You know, we 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 project from future and past, and we don't we don't get to enjoy the present. And it's it's we you know we're basing our experiences on we're basing our future or current experiences on our past and how we feel about that. You're going to generate the same feelings if you keep feeling. And touching, this is why, you know, you're so right about the stories and having to de detach from them. Those are the stories that keep us perpetuating the same crap. Yes. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> letting go of that is very important. Yeah. I feel like um, that part that you said around if you're thinking, if you're thinking and if your experience is in your past or if it's in your future, you're missing the now. And for me, yeah. learning to be in the now, that's where the magic is. That's where exactly. I see things about other people that I would not see if I was up in my head. I would experience them. Yeah. I might notice there there's a specific energy or I might hear words that I'm like, oh, I actually really needed to hear that. They don't even know what they've just said to me, but they've given me like oh. these gold nuggets just because I'm sitting yeah. listening and paying attention yeah and yeah being with everything that's here it's like oh okay i can feel my body at the moment i can feel the energy i can hear you i'm engaged in this conversation and um there's this beautiful flow and then if i was in my head worrying about what's happening after this podcast series <laughs> yeah exactly then you're going to be communicating with me and my mind's not even going to be here in this so that you're going to finish and I'm going to be like, oh, 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 next question, you know, right? There's, it's not a natural flow and to flow with anything. Yeah, exactly. If we just use this conversation as an example, because we're both choosing presence, we're choosing to uh, actively listen and then, and then be present with our own words and expression, there's a flow that's taking place where that's felt as well. And if you can feel and receive in flow, it reminds you of what that feels like just energetically. There's like a remembrance that takes place. No, for sure. And something that's fascinating, people, people that have a fear of speaking in public, have a fear of being speaking, you know, on social media, have a fear of jumping on podcasts, have a fear of being heard in or they feel like they fumble their words or their communication, right? Any of these stories that come up, they are non-existent in presence. In presence, when you breathe and connect, when you breathe and you connect, and like here, there's no searching for words does that make sense there is 
you're kind of just in flow with the word. So the fear dissipates. The fear of yeah. how am I going to be received? What am I saying? It just comes. And it's just this beautiful yeah, yeah. interaction of allowing and trusting the flow of communication, trusting the flow of life. But that's only available in presence. As soon as I'm out of the connection of this present moment, my brain steps in. And what I feel when I go into brain thinking is literally I feel like my right now in presence with you. I can feel my heart. I can feel there's a heat in my body because there's a lot of energy moving. Um, I'm aware of the floor, even though I'm not concentrating or focusing on the floor. Yeah, I'm yeah. aware of the lights in front of me. I have this big like picture of everything that's going on while still being able to see you, hear you, and receive all of you. And when I go into my head and I lose presence, what happens is it almost feels like this just all goes up to here, like all just here. And it's yeah, like really yeah. minding. And I'm like, my, my thoughts, I'll, I'll start looking mm -hmm. up and, I, and I'll start stumbling on my <laughs> words and... <laughs> And this so, is resonating, by the way. <laughs> right. So, as soon as I come out of this level of presence, I and I and and I watch this in my social medias. Um, when I was speaking from my head, it might have been this amazing topic, and I was so inspired, and I wanted to share it, but I'd start speaking it from here instead of here in my heart. Yeah. I would forget the things that I wanted to express. I would say a lot of ums. I would stumble. I would feel like a bit of anxiety. As soon as I learn, okay, just be present with your expression. It's okay to be slow. Yeah. It's okay to yeah. take a moment to think or to feel, not even to think. It's okay to take a moment to feel through the next words that are coming through, to touch myself, to remind myself that I'm here. Um, and to deeply like look at the person in front of me and be in this oh, oops, <laughs> this overwhelmed <laughs> energy and allow the energy to express itself and to give it a voice. Exactly that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, I, and I, I just, I, and I think, you know, I think the more people that like, you know, I think people struggle to really go on and on, on repeat, like show up online, you know? Um, and I think it's because, and I really like to speak into this because the reason is because there's, I don't know what you... Oh, I'm on data. <laughs> I'm on data now because uh, we've got loads headed. <laughs> Welcome to Africa. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But <laughs> well, you know, you're usually on Wi Fi, right? If you got mobile data, instead of using mobile data, I use, I would have, I was on Wi Fi, but. We get load shedding in Africa, which means every two, like once a day, we get shut off from electricity, like certain areas get cut off from electricity. So because the electricity is cut off, I don't have Wi-Fi and I'm using my mobile data. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see how well that goes then. <laughs> yeah, like it's probably, that's the reason why this kind of, it's got quite choppy. Yeah. In signal. Okay. Well, we'll continue and I can, um, we'll see how it goes because you did have two big pauses before, um, which I can. Yeah. yeah. Out, but uh, what you were sharing was about how um, people are afraid to communicate and show up on social media. Just in terms of a physical presence, it's very easy to write. It's very easy to write and post stuff, 
but a physical presence, people shy away from that. And 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 I, I'm just I'd like to speak into it in terms of maybe I don't really know the answers to that, reasons as to why, but there's obviously you know, there's a lot of people that do that. And and is it is it is it shame based or the are they, are they afraid? What are they afraid of? Because you know, like, don't we want to show all of yourself? Don't you want to? Don't you want people to see you? You know, we want people to see us, but they don't want maybe people to see all of us. And maybe that's why they don't really. Why people are afraid to jump up and do a line because they don't want to be totally seen, right? I don't know. Just I think it's just uh, it's something that I was, since you brought up being online and, and doing the physical presence, it's something to talk into because. You know, we should all feel free and comfortable to show up in all of ourselves. Yeah. It's interesting. I had a friend that was expressing about her realization of the different masks that she'd wear. So she had a social media mask that she would put on and she would show up on social media in this specific identity or she'd show up in her friendships in a specific identity. And what she'd started to notice was all these masks are crumbling before her face. And she was noticing that it was based on not wanting to be seen in all of her stuff, right? It was not wanting to be seen in sometimes I'm not okay. So instead of expressing I'm not okay right now and I'm not feeling, a sense of connection or a sense of strength. I'm actually feeling triggered and angry and annoyed. And it was like, well, instead I'll put my mask on. And it's like, it's a program. It's a program that we put on basically that has been conditioned of this is who I am. And you know, it's it's funny because I, I, I feel this uh. is, so it, it's, it encompasses the part of not wanting to be seen in all of us. And I feel every single individual yeah. I've ever met has this, right? We don't want to be seen in the past. Yeah, yeah, we we shame or that we judge or yeah. we've decided yeah. is wrong, you know. For me, a lot of that was my feminine energy. It was like it was weakness. Yeah. It was vulnerability. It meant that if I was in a place of my feminine vulnerability, I'd be abused. There was safety stories. There was I can't be seen in that because it's not, you know. And then I'm not that strong, yeah. independent woman that everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. sees me as. And yeah, yeah, it, would, yeah, yeah. it would break down this paradigm of what I've created the outside world to see me. And um. Yeah coming to a place of being, owning it. And the the thing that helped me, and I feel like is very helpful for anyone who resonates to this, anyone that has a point of going, oh, yeah, I actually am inauthentic in situations. Now, it's not saying that you're an inauthentic person and have compassion. We're all inauthentic, really. In truth, yeah, we're, yeah. we're all inauthentic. And exactly. To, we're choosing more and more authenticity by the more authenticity, heart. absolutely. Yeah, but absolutely. until we are sitting in the fullness of our heart at all times, <laughs> there's going to be inauthenticity. There's going to be moments where you absolutely. are acting from your truth, and that's okay because absolutely. it's. Um, but what came through for me was oh, if I don't choose to show my softness or if I don't choose to show my sadness or my sweetness or my nurturing or these parts of me that I actually love and I'm quite juicy in them, I'm only showing this much of my personality. And how am I going to find someone to love me in all of me? My friends are not going to love me. Because they're not seeing all of me. They see this portion. Exactly. And so we do it. On the money. Yeah, we do it in friendship. Yeah. We do it in dating. And we wonder why this person doesn't feel like there's a connection. Because you're not showing them yourself. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> hiding. Exactly. And you're also exactly. adjusting, adjusting and changing your behavior to get somebody to like you. When wouldn't you prefer to just be yourself? Yes. Be, yes. 
and the people that are going to be able to receive you will receive you and they will like you it's the same with social media it's the exact same thing it's like exactly. just practice showing up in all your mess i think yeah exactly just show up <laughs> yeah, just show up there's there's this quote that i used to use with my men's coaches um with my men's coaching clients and it was do it and do it badly because a lot of a lot of the men wanted to start to start new businesses and new creations and i was like yeah, whilst yeah, yeah. you're in your masculine mind you're going to want to do A to B to C to D and you're going to want to make sure it's all planned and it's all perfect and you've got this and this and you will never do it. I'm like, you're never going to do it. You just got to do it and do it badly and just show up. Uh, are we back? Ah, are we back? Yeah, man. <laughs> and you just got to show up and, and allow oh, no. the bad the badness of the doing <laughs> to be the learning, yeah, right? It's like, it's never as bad as the mind yeah, makes up. This is the, no, it's not. But the problem is we've got, we've, we've, we've gone around with the lenses of bad and wrong, bad and good, bad and not. Like, why are you doing that? Like, if it feels, doesn't feel nice, don't like, just don't do it. Don't make it bad or wrong. Just be levitated and guided by how you feel about something. You know, like if we, this is, the, we make something wrong and because we make something wrong, then we, we come judging with lenses with other people. And this is the thing that uh, we need to be able to cultivate a culture where there's no judgment and there's full acceptance. Because if there is that, people are going to show up, period. However they are, you know? <laughs> and I think there's a fear in that. Like, I'm not going to show up because they're going to see me like, they're going to see me like that. They're going to, and I don't want to, I don't want to be seen like that. You know what I mean? But if you, it, it's, and it's a question like, and then it's like, and, and sometimes I feel that it's even a subconscious thing. It's an, it's an egotistical thing because that ego doesn't want to be brought to the, to the front because if it comes, then it's in the light. And if it's in the light then something has to be done about it. Now you're aware you're in the conscious process. Now you're aware. Now you know your soul knows because you're aware you're going to have to do something about that. And I think that's probably potential why reasons as to why people don't want to show themselves because they have to face that part of themselves if they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly resonating to that is that if you continue to wear your mask, your mask is just you hiding from the parts of yourself that you don't want to look at and you don't want to see which is why we tend to project things onto others and judge others and create, you know, these masks. It's all self-protection from ourselves, from seeing like ourselves, that. meeting ourselves in that uh, emotion or discomfort or that story and um, moving through what you were saying at the very start of this call is leaning into that and realizing what's really there. And when it's we... Like, yeah. We can choose to flow with what feels good, but then there's also a level of where that becomes spiritual bypassing as well. Of like, no, absolutely, absolutely. Eventually, it's like, well, absolutely. does this not feel good because it's just not something that resonates to me, or does it not feel good because I'm avoiding something within myself? <laughs> it's, but it's all about no, hundred percent. But it's all about discernment, right? It's all about. Like, if, like it's all about discernment, right? Mm -hmm. No, go on. I go up. You should be back on. Yeah. It's all about discernment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's all about discernment and discerning which, which to feel, you know, which, um, what emotion to feel. Like if it's something that's come up, is this coming up as a result of something that I'm experiencing? Mm -hmm. And if so, like you've got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't question enough. If emotion comes up, we'll question that. Because mm -hmm. the minute you start questioning, you can understand, you can, be, you can discern whether that emotion needs to be looked at or not, or if it's just something that's come out of 
you know, out of, uh, out of thought, unnecessary thought, or, you know, and generally speaking, I do believe that if we're being activated by the situation, then those are generally the feelings that you really need to look at. Uh, outside of that, then it's really just thought based and things that you're thinking that you shouldn't be thinking to create feelings that you don't want to be feeling. Mm -hmm. So there is discerning, like I think the discernment is, for me, I, it's really about paying close attention to the experiences you have in, in each and every moment, because those, those are going to tell you what feelings to really look at and what, what not to, I think. Mm, yeah, powerful self-inquiry and questioning yeah, absolutely all the time mm. all the time you have to you have to all the time the, the level of questioning allows for us to have that discernment of what is actually true and i feel yes. byron byron katie is a beautiful example of this work where she it's questioning um our projections onto another and what does that make me feel and when I, when I have this thought or this feeling about someone who either wasn't there for me or um, I perceived in this way or they don't love me or they don't care, what does that, how do I feel in my body while I have this narrative? And it's, it's like, oh, okay, when, while I feel that this person loves me, I actually don't feel love. I don't, oh, my, ch my chest is tight. I don't want to be around them. They maybe irritate me. So you get to, you through the self-inquiry process, it's I see what this thought creates in my experience because I'm walking through and looking at and questioning what's there. And then the question is okay. flipped, and this is powerful. She flips it and she goes, so who would you be without that thought and how would it, affect you right if you didn't believe this person doesn't love me oh and often people often people go oh space or like i don't even know it's so expansive right there's such a different energetic response and so in those moments you're able to see how much those thoughts create the separation and and the the final piece she does is okay if you believe this person doesn't love me and if you turn that around on yourself, what is that? I don't love me. And that's where it gets into the deep work, right? The deep, the deep stuff Yeesh. we're talking about of like, <laughs> that's where you gotta go. Okay. Oh, you have no idea, but you, uh, amazing. You know, I love, I love life. You see, I knew this conversation was going to have some sort of impact on me because you're speaking in a dark, into a, you're speaking so perfectly into a, current situation like literally probably like moments ago <laughs> probably before this conversation speaking into something that i've just done i'm like ah uh, whoa <laughs> uh, whoa yeah you know it's just it's, oh it's that is huge that is huge <laughs> wow yeah it's beautiful and it's powerful right because when that's yeah, huge huge yeah those huge moments and acknowledging them and it gives us choice it gives us choice to feel what comes up it gives us choice to lean into it and to to change to change our narrative to change our entire exactly, yeah. based on a perception that wasn't even real you know it wasn't exactly even, but it's created so much discord and what's really true is able to be seen and then um, transmuted and changed. Um, yeah, exactly that. I, really beautiful. <laughs> that's that, that's like an incredible nugget. Like I, I really need to hear that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I believe probably a lot of people needed to hear that, and it was the perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, and I'm grateful absolutely. I got a mirror for you. And I'm grateful for your time. Um, no, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, for people, I will link all of your um, social media platforms and any websites in the description boxes. Amazing. This will be available on YouTube and Spotify when it goes up. Amazing. Is there anything that you want to share yeah. before we close off this beautiful conversation yeah just 
yeah, just to remind people to stay present, you know, stay in present and and find whatever you find the things you love to do and do that. <laughs> I like that one. Find the things that you want to do and do that. Love. It's so simplistic. No, right? Find the things you love to do. Like you want to something, love, like lights you up, that makes you feel incredible. Do that. <laughs> Do what lights you up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the words exactly of that. <laughs> Beautiful, <laughs> Shell. Thank you so much for your Thank time. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. You're very uh, welcome. Thank you. It's been, it's been wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for everyone who tuned into the Finding Union podcast. And make sure you subscribe to Spotify and YouTube. And if you feel, feel the resonance in your body of these activations and transmissions and want to share, share from a place of love so that we can have a beautiful, expansive ripple effect on humanity. I love you. Until Amazing. next time. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>